I've just got out this bicycle dynamo wind turbine that I made years ago because I realised that I can now do something that I've been wanting to do since I was lent a £200 data logger at college about a decade ago and that is to build my very own data logger and what I thought I would do with this wind turbine because it has adjustable blade angles is experiment with that and see if I can improve its performance the angle on here is just something that I guessed at when I made it um, but we can see if we can improve on that here's the inside of the turbine and that's the dynamo hub or called dyno hub I think it is, it's quite an old one the reason for all this is to take the force off the axle of this hub because I don't want to break it um, you can build blades around the hub itself but it's all hanging off this one little 10 mil axle there so that's what this coupling is about here and this extra bearing here to take the, the force from the blades um, I've just serviced that so that's been re-greased now uh, I've checked the alignment of all this so it spins nicely and um, improved some of this brackets here, added a few more pot rivets in places because it tends to suffer from fatigue after a while it's only aluminium and um, there's the rectifier of a car alternator really massive thing, oversized but it does the job I'm going to make a new tower out of aluminium tubing this time the old one was a bit of a disaster in the end it eventually ended up snapped in half which is why the turbine got stored away in the shed so this piece of aluminium is from some fishing equipment that's come across the Atlantic I believe it's a thing called a high flyer that fishermen use in around Newfoundland area but this is the tube the turbine used to use so it goes into the turbine and it happened to be a perfect fit inside there just hammered it in and I've also made this piece here which will take the guy ropes or wires and I shall stop it sliding down the the tube with another piece of tubing pop rooted around the outside. Here's the piece I'm going to cut out for the foot of the tower or hinge part of it. So it can be screwed down here. The tower will hinge from, from that pivot point there. And these are going to be the guy wire or rope anchors. So it's really satisfying when you can uh, minimize the wastage. The tower is pretty much complete now. I've just uh, temporarily put some bits of rope on it to try it out. The height is about 10 foot, so 3 meters. Just a good height, enough to get the blades up out of reach. I'm hoping that uh, this base is going to be heavy enough so it can be freestanding and not need anchoring to the ground. It seems to be pretty sturdy at the moment. The tower and turbine loaded up, ready to go down to the site. Priority at the moment is just to get the turbine working because I need to put some charge into my battery. And then we'll work on the data logging afterwards. It's the electrical connection done. Now let's get it up and see if we can get a voltage at the other end of the wire. Got a reed switch installed to measure the RPM of the generator. Quick and simple way of seeing if it's generating anything. Let's see if we can get a spark. Yep. This is the anemometer I'm going to use for measuring wind speed. It's in bits at the moment because I'm oiling up the bearings and giving it a check over. I made it about at least 15 years ago and I used to measure the wind speed from this reed switch with a cycle computer. I just fiddled the wheel diameter until it gave an approximate wind speed in miles per hour and then it would also average that up over a day of course. Um, this is the, the magnet on this uh, rotor here. It's waterproofed with a 2 litre plastic bottle and these cups here I'm not sure where I got them from they're made of copper. It doesn't spin that great the bearings are well worn by a few months of tiry wind speeds but it shouldn't matter too much because if there's low wind speeds the turbine won't be turning anyway so it should be fine. This set up on the bike I'm expecting a calm spell later as the wind changes from north to south. 
Got the Arduino there, got a reed switch on the front wheel and a reed switch on the anemometer. And at the moment I'm just interested in recording the time between reed switch pulses and I'll do the maths later. Here's the data from riding up and down the road a few times. Just about enough to be able to do this. We have at the bottom here the speed in meters per second of the bike and we can calculate that because we know the circumference of the wheel and the time for a rotation and this is the output of the anemometer which at the moment is a meaningless value but we've been able to use it and get the average which is the orange line and plot a trend line onto that and get the equation which is this one here so doing a bit of maths we have been able to come up with the final equation that we need to get wind speed from my particular anemometer and this 1.88 on the end here is a good demonstration of just how terrible the bearings are so what it means is that the anemometer won't measure anything under a wind speed of 1.88 meters per second which is about 4 miles per hour pretty terrible but we're going to work with what we've got and now at least it is calibrated to some extent anyway next was lots of soldering and messing around putting a current through the shunt so I didn't record any of that finally I have a fully working data logger circuit board here uh, it's putting out data here the uh, first is the wind speed turbine RPM, battery voltage, and current. It turned out to be quite a lot more effort because I wanted to power the whole thing off the supply which it's going to measure, but it turns out this amplifier here does require a separate power supply. But now I've got that sorted with this supply here from a 18650 two cell in series pack, it's got about 7 amp hours so it should last plenty of time to power this data logger. Now I've got that sorted, I'm pretty happy with the resolution of the current sensor because it um, measures only up to around 800 milliamps. This is a 2.7k resistor so it should draw around 4 milliamps. I'm going to say about 3, not bad at the low end of the scale. The next problem I came across was this Arduino didn't want to read its VIN pin through a voltage divider. It's just giving an unreliable voltage. So I'm now powering this off the same separate supply and it's now nicely measuring the, um, the battery voltage here. It's going to simulate, that will be the turbine, and this is simulating the load or battery. And it's displayed on there. We've also got here the two digital inputs. From the reed switches, the anemometer and the turbine RPM. And if I spin the anemometer, you should see the first value will be one speed meters per second. So what it's going to do is um, write this SD card every 10 seconds. You see its card is missing, so that's why it's saying it's missing. But it's taking a sample every second which is displaying on here and then it's averaging it up and that average is what's written to the SD card so now let's go and install it and um, see if we can get some good data so just when I thought I had a complete working data logger I had the current sensing part working nicely with the current shunt here I then went to measure voltage which would have to be taken from here and realized that there was an issue. This is ground and therefore that would be minus 12 volts and you can't read that with an analog pin on an Arduino. So at that point I thought how am I going to do this? But I then drew this out and realized that if I move the generator from there up to here instead you can still keep the current flowing in the same direction but now I can measure a voltage from this point here into the Arduino's analog pin and it's a positive voltage so the problem is fixed just by rearranging 
position of the generator, load and current shunt. Well that's it all wired up now. I'm getting data there. So wind speed, turbine RPM, battery voltage and the last one is current which unfortunately at the moment doesn't seem to be reliably reading. I've checked the multimeter and the amplifier is giving a nice smooth output so it's just a coding issue but uh, for the moment I'm just going to stick an SD card in there and see what I can get. And this is what I got. It's not amazing data. The wind speed was only just enough to get the turbine to generate something. And there's a few other issues as well which I'm about to go into. What we have here in blue the wind speed. Grey is the battery voltage. And on the secondary axis we have orange for turbine RPM and yellow for current. You might notice that the wind speed and RPM are too high at times. So the wind speed is maxing out at 15 meters per second and turbine RPM at 600 RPM. Now this is an issue with the read switch timer code which I have now fixed and made a video about it. Basically it's been made far worse in this application because both in both cases the magnet is on a very small diameter and so that means that the chance of it being in front of the read switch is far higher but now with the modified code we should be able to measure up to one and a half thousand rpm which is equivalent to around 37 meters per second which is about 80 miles per hour the other issue is with the current measurement as I've just mentioned in the previous clip and I'm going to go into how I managed to solve that in the next video. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching.